you've maybe heard this famous quote made by Neil Armstrong, the commander of the Apollo 11, about their moonwalk. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But it's, it just can't compare to what Jesus did for all mankind when he went to the cross and died on it. You know, I learned something this week I didn't know. I never knew they had communion on the moon. It was the first act. And I thought that was amazing when I downloaded that film. It shows an incredible contrast, by the way, in the story of Nebuchadnezzar, who we've been studying. And it stands again against that story that we're going to talk about a little bit later today. Nebuchadnezzar, like most of mankind, had an incredible desire to claim accomplishment and fame. In this film, Buzz Aldrin, when he landed on the moon, the first thing he did was have that communion service. He was recognizing that far beyond the, the tens of thousands of people who dreamed and calculated and wrote computer programs and designed the mothership and the lunar lander and who built those incredible machines, all too numerous to mention people, that there was a God that made it all possible. And he wanted to give thanks to that God. He alone is the one that gave us life and the ability to accomplish such wonderful feats such as that. Without a God who created the earth and the moon and gave us the abilities that lie within each of us, nothing would have been possible. and That wouldn't have been possible. And even beyond that, he gave us his only begotten son to give us a hope in the future. You know, as I was thinking about that accomplishment and and Buzz wanting to give credit and to recognize God in his own way, by himself if necessary. I think in that attitude uh, is just amazing. And I begin to think about what is the first thing we do when we accomplish something? Do we take God time to give God the things for giving us the ability to do whatever we've achieved? Or are we too busy celebrating? Uh, too often the celebration in major sports achievements is the breaking out of the champagne and giving homage to one another for what they have accomplished together. And perhaps it's the champagne that dulls their minds so much that they leave, never realizing that those abilities were given to them by somebody else by a God that lives in heaven. Former heavyweight boxer, uh, James Quick Tillis, was a cowboy from Oklahoma, and he fought out of Chicago in the early 1980s. And he remembers his first day when he arrived in the Windy City. After his arrival from Tulsa, he said, I got off the bus with two cardboard suitcases under my arms in downtown Chicago, and I stopped in front of the Sears Tower. And I put my suitcases down, and I looked up at the tower and said to myself, I'm going to conquer Chicago. And when I looked down, my suitcases were gone. <laughs> again, we think about pride. And we're going to be doing that again in a little bit when we get to the sermon part of the service. But I think we always read and remember what the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 19. It says, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before stumbling. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't ever be excited about things we accomplish. I get as excited as anybody else when some of our church kids are on a team that wins a game. But we still need to remember that we don't need to build these things up in our minds so much that we forget to give God the credit because he deserves it all. I get excited when I see high school teams and college teams, sometimes after a game, getting together in a circle out on the, on the floor to have a word of prayer after a game. I think that's amazing that they would do something like that, giving God the credit. You know, here, we're here to celebrate in this service Christ's sacrifice for us. I want you to think about what is said in Philippians 
2, verses 5 and 10. It says, have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Jesus or Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not require or regard equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of men, and having been found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. It speaks of Jesus' attitude throughout life is being one of humility. You know, there's not a one of us that has been born as the only begotten Son of God. That's above us all. But Jesus didn't use that fact, even though he knew it. He didn't use that to elevate himself above the others. Instead, he became a servant of everybody else. He didn't want to try to usurp God's place. And that's what we sometimes do when we take credit for everything instead of giving it to God. But he humbled himself even to the point of death. Not that he would be praised, but that we might have salvation. When we have that same attitude, then we are promised that one day we will be exalted with Jesus in the kingdom. The greatest success we can have in life today is to live in obedience to God in everything that we do. And so by so doing, be invited to be a part of his everlasting kingdom. This service is given to remind us of what Jesus has done, to remind us of that spirit of, of love, of humility, and of giving that caused him to give his life for us. And that's why we're told in the scriptures, as we reflect on our own lives, that we, it says, let every man examine himself. And then, and I think in doing that, we renew our relationship to Jesus and God and are strengthened by this service then. So let's take a few moments to kind of look at our own lives and, and how much and how often we give God the praise for everything that we do and everything that we have. And just turn our minds to think about God and Jesus for a few moments before we partake of these meals. Almighty God, we remember what your son did so long ago. Again, humbling himself even to death on the cross so that we might have life. Father, help us always in everything that we do to use even the daily activities of our lives to bring glory to you and to your Son. Father, the, the things that we count as being great accomplishments today, even landing on the moon, like the accomplishment of creating an earth and the people and everything that's on it, or the accomplishment of what you've promised us in the future of living in your kingdom and the glory that will be there. And Father, we just thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. And we pray that as we participate in this service, that you would help us to think about him, what he did on the cross for us. And let our minds reflect lives of service to you. We pray in your son's name.